The most important part of learning Vim is learning how to close it. Jokes aside, we will do that as well, but we will also learn how we can actually utilize Vim. Now personally I use NeoVim and you can find my full setup over on this video. Now the reason for this video is that I want to show you that Vim doesn't have to be hard, but can actually be very powerful and very fun to use. And now for those of you saying that Vim doesn't make you a better developer, yes it does. Well you're completely right, it's just a personal preference and maybe you want to learn it and see for yourself. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. You can find a full write-up of this video over at robertbrunager.com, but let's get into it. Now comes the most fundamental one, which is just opening Vim. For me, as I'm using NeoVim, I will write nvim and then dot. That will open the current directory in NeoVim. Now when we open this, we get into the folder structure of the project. But to actually do anything, we have to learn the fundamental movements of Vim. Which are the J and K keys to go down and up, as well as the H and L keys to go left and right. As you can see here, we're just going to navigate with J and K to select the folder or file that we want to navigate to. Now it's also possible to use the arrow keys, but I advise you to try and learn to not use them. Let's navigate to the readme file. And you can see all of the keys that I'm pressing in the bottom right corner. So here we can see those keys again. We're navigating up and down with K and J, and we can navigate to the right and left with L and H. Just this kind of movement will probably feel quite unnatural in the beginning, but the more you do it, the more you will get used to it, and it will feel like second nature. So I highly recommend just trying to navigate around a bit, Use the H, J, and K, and L keys to just go down and go up, right and left. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that you're not able to really write yet. Well, the reason for this is that Vim actually has a bunch of different modes, but the main ones are normal mode, insert mode, and visual mode. When we navigate using the H, J, and K, and L keys, we actually are in the normal mode which is mostly used for editing and navigating around. Now, if we actually want to write some code, we have to go into insert mode. When you are in insert mode, you will actually be able to write, and you can get into this by pressing I. Now, if you want to get out of insert mode, you can hit escape or control C to navigate back to normal mode. These two are the ones you will use the most, but another one that you'll use a lot of the times are actually visual mode. So if you hit escape to go back to normal mode and then press V, you'll go into what's called a visual mode. Now all the keys will act as they were in normal mode, so you will navigate, but what you can see is that we actually visually mark everything that we actually navigate over. And this can be super handy if you want to mark some text and do, for example, some copying and pasting. Now let's go to the bottom of the file and let's write something. So let's say we go into insert mode, we'll start writing some text, and then when we have done writing that text, we'll go back to normal mode. The reason we went back to normal mode is because we want to save those changes. So when we are in normal mode, we can hit the colon key, and you can see that in the bottom left, and then W. W in this case stands for write, but in simple terms it just means that we are saving. And now for everyone's favorite, we need to learn how to actually exit Vim. So to exit, you do colon Q. And now you have successfully exited Vim, but there's one small hiccup here. Let's navigate back into the file and let's make some changes. Let's say we are going to add some text. So let's go into insert mode and write some additional text in here. Now let's try and do colon Q once again, and we can see that we're just getting some red error messages, meaning that we can't really quit right now. The reason for this is because we haven't really saved the file, so it's giving us a warning saying that, do you really want to quit because you haven't actually saved? Now if we don't want to save, we can actually quit with colon Q and then an exclamation mark. And if we want to save and quit, we do colon WQ for write and quit. 
So if we do that and then navigating back in again, we should see that those changes are still back in that file because we first saved and then quit. Now, one super handy thing with normal mode is that you're able to edit and delete text just as you want. So for example, if we want to delete this line right here, we can hit that with a double D, which means that we will delete that line. So with just hitting D twice, we will call a delete command and then D again, which will mean that we just delete that line. Now this delete command can actually be combined with other commands. So if you hit D once and then W, it will delete one word. So for example, we may also want to navigate a bit more. So instead of hitting those H and L keys over and over again, we can start using W and B for navigating one word forward, also using B to navigate one word backwards. And this will just make the horizontal navigation a lot more smooth instead of hitting those main navigation keys over and over again. Now another content creator called the Primogen actually have a bunch of videos and series just for navigating and making your Veeam experience a lot more smooth. I will link him down in the description, so make sure to go to his channel, subscribe and check out those videos if you find this interesting. Now one thing a developer can never go without, and that is just copy pasting. So coming from something like an IDE, copy pasting in Vim can be quite tricky, because Ctrl C for example will quit Vim. So to actually copy paste, we use visual mode to mark something, press Y to copy it or yank it, and then we can use P to paste it. So Y in this case is the Ctrl C and P in this case is the paste or Ctrl V. Just be aware that you have to be in either normal mode or visual mode to actually do this. If you're in insert mode, you will just start typing. Now, one thing you will notice as well is that when you delete something in normal mode, let's say you want to delete a text with the D command twice, that will actually be stored in the Vim clipboard, meaning that if you hit P once again, that will actually be pasted. Here's an example, we just deleted that word, and when we hit P, we will start pasting that word. Which is quite handy, because you will be able to super quickly start deleting things and pasting it somewhere else, or yanking things and pasting it somewhere else. Now, one thing you may have noticed when using I for insert mode, is that it's hard sometimes to edit things below or above what you're just editing. So let's say you are in this line and you start editing. If you hit O, that means that we will go one line below our current line, go into insert mode, so we can just go and start typing. If we do the same, go back one line up and do shift O, we'll start doing the same, but one line above. One thing you may have noticed also is that I can undo the changes with U and control R to redo the changes. Now being in one file is all fine and dandy, but most of the times we will navigate different files and we can do this with the edit command. So if you hit colon, you can see in the bottom left corner that I write E and then the file that I want to edit. And you can see that that opens in a new window or buffer and I can start editing in that file. And now most of the times when you actually go and edit some file, you may want to go back one file, which you can do with control O that will navigate back, and if you hit Ctrl I, that will navigate forward again. And just these basic commands will feel like magic because you start navigating back and forth to different buffers or files with ease. Now it starts getting a bit more interesting. So let's say we want to start searching for something. Let's say we are in a file and we want to search for an A. To do this, we just hit slash and then write the something we want to search for, which is A in this case. If we now start hitting N, we will start navigating forth. And if we hit shift N or capital N, we'll go backwards. Now, anytime you are confused by something, you can actually use the inbuilt documentation. So if you hit colon again, and then H for help, and you can write something that you want to get help with. Let's say I want to search for scroll. You can see that we are in the documentation for the scrolling 
section. For example, here we can read about Control u and Control d to scroll up and down. That way you're not limited to using J and K to navigate up and down, which can become quite bothersome because it takes quite a lot of time to actually scroll up and down that file. So let's see that in action. Let's navigate to the main.dart file. So E lib main.dart. And now we can start using Control d to go down and control U to go up. And of course, there are a bunch of different commands to actually navigate inside a file. For example, you can do Shift G and that will navigate to the bottom of the file. And then if you hit G twice, that will navigate to the top of the file, which can be super handy if you, for example, want to import something. Now there's a lot of things you can already do. But what I usually do is actually use some plugins to make things a lot more simpler and easier to use. So for example, I'm using Nerdtree to get that typical file explorer that I'm used to with Visual Code and hitting Ctrl B will open that. This is for me just a lot easier if I'm not sure where I want to navigate and just having an explorer just gives me a better understanding of the project and where files actually are. Now in this case, if you want to learn which plugin I'm actually using for this, it's called Nerdtree. And in my other video, I go through all of the plugins that I use, which will help you with that. But with this, you can do all of the tasks like creating a new file or folder, etc. Let's go ahead and close that side view or explorer. And let's go and search for a file that we want to navigate to. In Visual Code, this is usually bound to Control P. So that's what I bound this plugin for. So if I hit Ctrl P, it will actually open Telescope. In my other video, I used FCF, but there are also other plugins such as Ctrl P. But this will in simple terms, just let me search for files. For example, I can search for the main.dart file and I can see a preview at the top. Right now I have very zoomed in code, so you're not able to really see the preview, but for example, I can remove that main search and search for the readme instead and simply do a quick navigation to the readme file. Now, one more important thing is that I'm using COC, which means that I can navigate to the definition of a class or the reference. So in this case, I can press GD and navigate to the stateless widget, Control O going back again, GD going to into material app, and then I can navigate even deeper or control O to go back. So in this video, I actually showed you a lot and I want to show you a bit of how it actually looks in action. Now be aware, I'm not doing this as fast as possible, but I want to actually show you how it can actually look. So let's say we want to remove the float and action button that we actually get for the start application. And there are a bunch of different ways we can do that. We can do it with our visual marking tool and we can visually mark it and then hit D to delete it. But we can be even more efficient. So let me show you another way to do it. We can visually mark it once again. You can hit four and then J. That will mean that we'll go down four steps and then we can hit D to delete that. And why not being even more efficient? Let's hit four D and then J to delete four lines below. Now, when you get a bit more into Vim, you will start to notice that you can actually combine a lot of different things. So we can do C, I, and then quotation, which means that we'll change inside the quotation. This will put you into insert mode right away and you can start writing away. Let's say here, we don't want to call this increment counter method. We can call D and then T to delete two and then comma, which will delete everything up to the comma. Here we can just go into insert mode and start writing something like an anonymous function to not call anything. We can undo that so we get back to the change we were on before. Now let's say we want to import something. We can hit GG to go to the top and we can start just doing, for example, O and start writing import. We can navigate down with Ctrl D and then navigating back up with Ctrl U, which means that we'll get a super quick navigation between in our file. Let's say we want to delete the variable on line 28. We can hit 28 and then J to navigate down 28 steps, hitting D twice to delete that line. 
We can go down eight steps, delete that variable setter. Now we have that counter text in the widget tree, which we want to remove because now it's not a variable anymore. And we can just change inside quotation and just write something. We can go ahead and save the file with colon w, which we just save that file. And of course we can undo everything with u to go back to how it was before. For me, after learning all of these things, it just made it a lot more fun to start editing and writing code. For some reason, the feeling of just using your keyboard just made a lot more sense and was a lot more fun for me. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. You can find a full write-up of this on robertbrunonga.com. And if you want to support this channel and everything we do here, make sure to check out Patreon. I have a bunch of different perks and it would really mean a lot. So here we have two other videos. Make sure to check them out. They are probably super interesting. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.